Hi, my name is Philip Wilke. I'm a researcher at the Center for Quantum Nanoscience in Seoul, and I'm sitting down today with Gigi and Sierra, uh, who are not scientists, and I'm going to explain to them our recent results. Hi, Sierra. Hi, Philip. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, so let me ask you questions. What do you think this is? I think that is a picture of atom. Exactly, this is a, um, a picture of an atom. What are the uh, blue balls? Electrons. Electrons. And uh, um, the, the thing in the center? Nucleus. So, so this is the core of the atom um, and it consists out of protons and neutrons. And the electrons um, those are pretty useful, right? We use electrons, for example, in electronic devices or for electric currents. So, uh, do you know anything where the nucleus, where the core of the atom is useful for? I don't have any idea. <laughs> but do you know what this is? Uh, X-ray or MRI? It is an MRI. You know what that stands for? No. Magnetic resonance imaging. So it's imaging, it's creating um, images inside the human body. And do you know how it works? No. It turns out that um, this nucleus that I just talked about um, is a very tiny magnet as well. And the MRI can actually detect the density of these nuclear magnets in our body. In particular, in water and in fat uh, molecules in our body. Um, but to create an image like this, how many atoms do you think one needs? Tons of. Tons of is a very good, good, good idea. Billions? Billions is a good one, trillions, something like that. So a lot of them. So what we wanted to do is measure the nuclear um, magnet, um, the nuclear spin of one single atom. And to do that, we use one of our microscopes, a scanning tunneling microscope, that can actually uh, make images of single atoms. And I bought one of these images here, which is a million times smaller than a centimeter. Um, do you see atoms in here? The little dark things? There's a real, really round, small particle in that picture. I think that is an atom. That is an atom, exactly. These, the white dots are actually um, iron atoms that we deposited on our sample, which in this case is an insulator called magnesium oxide. And here, I have now two of these atoms um, magnified. And another thing that we can do with our microscope is measure the electron energy of the atom. And in the spectra, we observe um, the electron energy as a peak, um, and um, for example, for atom number one. Mm -hmm. But for some atoms, as for atom number two, we do not see one peak, but two peaks in the spectrum. Uh, in the same range. And we could show that this is the fingerprint of the um, magnetic field of the nuclear magnet that is now interacting with the electron magnet. And this coupling between the electron magnet and the nuclear magnet is what we physicists call um, the hyperfine coupling because it's usually very, very tiny. So the difference between these two atoms is that they are uh, different isotopes of iron. What is isotope? So, do you know what an isotope is? Yeah, it's where an atom has the same number of protons and electrons, but a different number of neutrons. Exactly. So it's the same element, but different number of neutrons, and that determines whether it has or doesn't have uh, a nuclear magnet. So these are different isotopes of iron, and the number of neutrons actually also influences whether it has a nuclear magnet or not. And another element that we studied where this is more pronounced is titanium. So here I have three different um, titanium atoms and um, the spectra look again completely different. How do they differ? There are more of the peaks. Exactly. So for uh, two of these isotopes we see even more peaks. This is because for titanium the nuclear magnet is even larger so it can even have more configurations than just uh, parallel or anti-parallel, something in between, right? And this is this is great because we can now directly tell which isotope one single atom is just by looking at its spectrum. And another type of experiment that we did 
is this one. So here I show three images, but it's always the same titanium atom. Mm -hmm. But um, what we did is um, we moved it to different positions um, on the sample, on the magnesium oxide. And how do you think this changes the spectrum on the right? Mm, the height is different. Yeah. Um, it has more peaks when it's not in the center of the squares on the grid. Exactly. So the, the green configuration in the middle looks a lot different, right? It's got squeezed together. This is essentially at this position, which is um, on top of one of the oxygen atoms of our magnesium oxide sample, um, the electronic structure of our atom changes due to the bonding to the oxygen atom. So um, essentially you change the density of electrons that are present at the nucleus and that can couple to the nuclear magnet and therefore this hyperfine coupling shrinks together. Essentially this is a little bit like the MRI in the beginning. Um, the nuclear magnet helps us to study the structure of the atom. And we think this is pretty useful to learn more about um, atoms and how they how their structure is. So let me ask you, have you have you learned something today? Yeah, I learned what a hyperfine structure is, what an MRI stands for and what it does. Um, and the position of an atom changes the properties of an atom. Uh, each atom has different spectrum and that was really really interesting to so that was me explaining my research to non-scientists. Uh, thank you all for watching. And please subscribe to QNS YouTube channel and see you next time. Bye! Bye. If you want to learn more, check out the links in the description below. Bye! Bye.